Welcome into the New Orleans Pelicans podcast presented by SeatGeek, a podcast dedicated to everything you need to know about the squad. Ingram going to dribble it out in the backcourt. Everybody on their feet. There's the horn. The Pelicans back home. Taste the sweet fruits of victory. The New Orleans Pelicans podcast starts right now. Welcome to the Pelicans Podcast, presented by SeatGeek. I am Joe Cardosi, joined by the ultra hubristic Mr. Jim Eichenhofer, because baby, the Pelicans have won seven of their last eight, 122-114 over the Clippers. I'm riding on sunshine today. I'm just floating. What an incredibly great weekend it was for yes. New Orleans and the Pelicans to be able to pick up that win. I mean, there were so many interesting things that happened around the NBA and the Western Conference Boy. over the previous few days. Yeah. But I think we can agree that from a Pelicans perspective, the most important and significant of those things was that they won by eight points Just against win. the Clippers. They really kind of walked the Clippers down. I thought LA got off to a really good start. It was definitely reason for concern the way that Westbrook was playing, and Kawhi Leonard had a great game, I think, from start to finish. But I mean, the Pelicans trailed most of that game. They really you know, did. They, yep. they, they mm-hmm. didn't really chip away until the fourth. Right. And it seemed like they put together a run in the third quarter, maybe early fourth quarter, where I finally was like, I think they're going to win this game. Yes. Because, I mean, the Clippers were playing a back-to-back, but it just seemed like mentally once New Orleans was able to get over the hump and take a 5 Six point lead. It was like they they're going to win this game now. I think yeah. I don't know how much the Clippers have left. They were relying so much on Kawhi too that yeah, eventually like forty points. He had a good game. He, he was great, but eventually he did miss a couple shots, and I was like, you know what? Maybe he's starting to get yeah. a little tired. As much of a mach- as a machine as that guy is, yeah. you do you do have to remind yourself that he is human, and and you know eventually, like I said, the Pelicans were able to get some good stops on defense and. Yeah. Uh, just turn the game around and, and, and the, pull away. And the Clippers had, you know, a plan coming in to face these Pelicans. You know, they rested Kawhi uh, the second half of that game. Uh, you know, that the previous bizarre. game, which was very bizarre, mm-hmm. didn't seem to sit well with Ty Lu, which was bizarre no. to watch that press conference. No. But it was obviously a, a strategy and one that did not work. Uh, Tee uh, as you know, Kawhi did have a great game. But you know who had a, a better game overall? Mr. Brandon Ingram. Because watching him operate lately has just been a thing of beauty. He is just on a tear, man. I mean, he's playing so well. It's hard to even describe the level that he's playing at right now. I would say he's all NBA player right mm-hmm. now if you look at his last couple of weeks. And it's funny, he was Western Conference Player of the Week last week. And then this week, he's his stats are almost identical to what he did during the, the previous stretch where the Pelicans went 3-0 and last week, and then they went 3-1 and this week. Mm-hmm. This week, he that just concluded, he averaged 30.5 points, 7.3 rebounds, 7.3 assists, shot 55% from the field, 50% from three-point range. I'm not going to go through what he did last week, but mm-hmm. it would it's like a carbon copy. He, he did almost exactly the same thing number, numbers-wise. And, I mean, more importantly – if you watch the games too, he's it's not just the numbers and the stats. It's the fact that he's delivering huge baskets whenever they need them. They, the Pelicans had a stretch where they blew out a bunch of teams, but then this game against the Clippers, it was tight in the fourth quarter, and they said, B.I., here you go. Here's the ball. Mm-hmm. Just go to work, and the Clippers were unable to stop him, especially in the mid-range. And, and Ty Lue talked about it. He said defenders tried to blitz Ingram when he had the ball, but, quote, he still got where he got with the blitz. So they were trying. They, they understand mm-hmm. what they need to do to Brandon Ingram. He's still just able to get his shots. Some of those shots were just absolutely tough. Just defenders right. in his face. You, there's nothing you can do. And it's funny. The Clippers definitely did a lot differently defensively this time than they did the previous Saturday when Trey Murphy had 10 three-pointers yeah. in the game in L.A. And it was funny. When I looked at the box score this after this game and I saw the three-point shooting, I was like, I thought there was something. I thought I had like a second quarter or third quarter update and not the full box score because I mean they only took I think it was 17 three pointers which just looks so out of place but yeah the Clippers range they were making sure that Trey Murphy did not get a bunch of threes off they were staying attached to him but the great thing about that was if you if you go back and look at some of the plays they're basically they have a guy face guarding Trey like 25 30 feet from the basket and so because of that 
the rest of the floor is so much more open. Yep. And it basically takes spacing makes such a huge it, difference it really, and when it, you really have a threat. And it takes one of their defenders completely out of any help defense. Yes. The, whoever's guarding him is is saying, I'm not I don't care if someone just dribbled right past me, I'm still staying here right with Trey Murphy. So um it was a totally different approach, like I said, by the Clippers, but they still were not effect, able to be effective, and the Pelicans ended up with 122 points, shot great from the field. Um, it really helps to have Brandon Ingram be, I don't know what the numbers are, but he seems like he's shooting about 90% from mid-15 yes. to 18 feet lately. That It's just been automatic. So. I mean, look at his last nine games. 31 points, 26 points, 32 points, 30 points, 32 points, 29 points, 26, 31, 36 that's that's just mechanical. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's just insane, the tear that he's on. Uh, oh, by the way, just read this stat. The Pelicans have the fourth best point differential in the Western Conference, and that's with Zion and B.I. only playing 70 games combined. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the Pelicans have been looking good, man. And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to talk about all the scenarios, the scenarios on this Monday because, man, they are myriad. I have been busy all weekend. I, I'm mm. not going to lie. Uh, Understandable. I know you got a lot of things going on. Yeah, I got a lot of things, you know, so I I don't get to to hang out that much. I I went to bed early the other night. I ate a lot of cheese and went to sleep, had some of those cheese dreams. You know, I call (laughs) it riding the yellow pony. Uh, But, you know, so I didn't really get to see the scores. So I'm going to I'm going to assume, you know, Jazz, they've been looking good and we do not want to face them because our record against them, not good. So uh, I'm going to assume that we got to worry about them coming up. Uh, they actually went 0-2 this weekend. They lost to Boston, and then they lost to Brooklyn on Sunday. So, yeah, not a good weekend for them. They're, oh. they're almost completely not a, a, a thing to worry about. Pelicans are four games up over them with four games apiece wow. left for both teams. Oh, that feels good. Okay, okay, so so looking at the other teams nipping at our heels, you got to worry about those pesky Oklahoma City Thunder who have been way ahead of schedule, man. Yeah, the, they actually went 0-2 this weekend as well. They lost kind of shockingly Friday to Indiana, a team that's been um, not putting their best foot forward, let oh. me say. And then Sunday, the Thunder lost to Phoenix, so they went 0-2 this weekend. Whoa, well, that helps the Pelicans. All right. So then you've got Warriors uh, that are just uh, on a hot streak, and uh, you know, I just they just seem unstoppable. Lately. Yeah, they you know unstoppable, but they played against the Nuggets last night, and the Nuggets did not have Jokic. So you figure that's a win. That actually was not a win; it was what? a loss. What? So what? Golden State went one and one this weekend. Um, on Friday, they did beat the Spurs. However, they were down by one going into the fourth quarter. It's amazing. I got my hopes up a little bit, that but not great. too much. But nonetheless, yeah, the, the Warriors closed the weekend Ooh, with a loss man. to Denver. 0-3 so here. So now the Pelicans are only a half game behind the Warriors in the standings. Gosh. Okay, well, okay, so you got uh, you got that. That's looking good. Okay, I guess I should have paid attention here. We got the it's Mavericks. It's okay, Joe. You know, it's okay. The, the Mavericks have been uh, not looking good, but you got to figure – they're going to write the ship at some point. I mean, you've got Kyrie Irving. They've got too much talent. They've, They've got, got too, too much, much offensive firepower. Seriously, there's no way it's going to go down the tube. So the Mavs have to turn it around at some point. Yeah, and, and even further to your point, uh, I was watching uh, NBA Today, and they were predicting, you know, this was before the weekend, right. of who makes the play-in. And they were one of the gentlemen on there, who well, will remain unnamed, picked Here the Mavs go. to make the play-in over the Pelicans. <laughs> Well, you know, I, in fairness, he was wearing a beanie with a little propeller on it <laughs> when he said the prediction, but still. Uh, I don't think he's still going to be making that prediction, Joe, because yeah. the Mavericks lost to Miami and Atlanta <laughs> over the weekend. They went 0-2 as well. <laughs> uh, they're in big trouble as far as making the play, uh, play in. And I, I they think need f- miracles at this yes, point. Yes, and, and further to what we care about specifically, um, the Pelicans Go are on the verge of being – too far ahead of Dallas. Yes. If the, if the Pelicans win one more game or the Mavericks lose one more game, that's over as well. So that race is pretty much decided. Um, rough weekend for oh, the Mavericks. Man, rough, uh, rough end of season for the Mavericks. Boy, all the hope that they had when that super team, quote unquote, came together. All right. Well, speaking of super teams, uh, you got to talk about the Clippers. Look, it was good to, to win against them, but they're still a very good team and they still sit Ahead of the Pelicans, so uh, always got to worry about the Clippers, huh? Yeah, they went 0-2 this weekend as well. They, they lost, in addition to the lost Saturday Ooh, against the Pelicans that we already discussed, they lost Friday to Memphis. That was the game that we Whoa. referenced where Kawhi played 18 minutes in the 
the first half and then didn't play in the it's second sad, half. Yeah. We're just confused in general about what they're doing, but that that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. Bottom line, Worked they, great. Bottom line, they went 0-2 this weekend, so we were happy about that. <laughs> well, uh, I guess the last team that, that you got to worry about and the team that I, I sort of predict to be a dogfight down the stretch with, uh, the Timberwolves, who we're going to be facing. Uh, they're a tough team, and uh, you always got to worry about those Timberwolves. How did they do this weekend? Yeah, yeah, Joe. You know, I mean – Everybody's been saying, including me, that you know it's going to come down to the game eighty-two. That yeah. the, the these the Pelicans and the T Wolves are going to be so close with each other in the standings that that's going to be resulting in that that Sunday game is going to be the apocalypse. Yeah. Well, guess what? It might not be. What? Because the T Wolves lost Friday to the Lakers. What? And then they lost Sunday to Portland, which was absolutely Whoa. shocking. Portland? Yes. What? The, 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 the team with uh, like two dudes that are actually in the NBA? Portland? Right, right. That, that is team. a historic win, I believe. Yes. Uh, yeah, that, that was that was brutal. I, I was watching the end of that game, and Minnesota's uh, TV broadcast team basically was like, this is a game that you had to win, and the, the T-Wolves were not able to get it. As a result... The Pelicans are oh. now one and a half games ahead of the Timberwolves. If the Pelicans can win out, that game 82 against Minnesota will not be for, you know, finishing ahead of the Timberwolves or not. The Pelicans will have too much of a lead on Minnesota oh, for that game to be beautiful. a situation where the T-Wolves can catch them. So wow. that's what we're going to hope for. Some combination of the Pelicans winning their next three games and or the T-Wolves losing a game or two before that game. And, Instead of it being bite your nails, hopefully it'll be a little bit more relaxing and not as much of a thing where we're we're nervous going into the game. But anyways, that back to the bananas. point. Minnesota Woo. went zero and two this weekend as well. So that is crazy. Oh. I definitely shouldn't have eaten so much cheese because I missed a lot. Uh, yeah, you really did. I mean, of the six teams that we just mentioned, they went a combined one and eleven this weekend. Whoa. That is just. I mean, you couldn't staggering. have asked for much better than no. that. No, man, it is. Uh, it is just looking peachier and peachier, and in terms of the Pelicans' outlook, and and they do face a daunting schedule down the stretch, which we will get into after we talk to our guest, Miss Aaron Hardigan of Bally Sports. But we will get into it because oh it's juicy and uh jim's got all the numbers it's crazy but uh as i said we do have our guest today miss aaron hardigan waiting on the line of valley sports always great to have her friend of the pod uh basically a hall of famer in the podcast i would say she's you know if i was gonna release power rankings for pelicans podcast Love yes i rankings. think she'd be number one right now yes so she's we seem to have her on constantly and that's a good thing for us and the listeners. Yes, yes. We're just trying to give the people what they want. More Hardigan. So let's get to Bally Sports, Aaron Hardigan. Joining us on the Pelicans podcast, we could not be more delighted to have a guest on this show. Someone that we uh, we talk about off air uh, constantly, uh, almost to the point that it's creepy. It's just because we love her so much. It is Aaron Hardigan of Bally Sports. Aaron, rah, 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 how are you doing today? No wonder my ears are always burning. Yes. Um, listen, y'all, I don't know if I'm getting older or just having too much fun, but how in the world are we in the final week of the regular season? It's unbelievable. I'm actually, I'm calling this final week our Final four uh, with yeah. four games remaining. It's the proverbial final lap of this wild Western race. Before we talk basketball, though, can I please give like a huge shout out to the LSU Lady Tigers yeah. on bringing home a title to the boot? Um, love, love, love Kim Mulkey. I've known her forever. Totally dig her as a person and her outfits as outrageous as they may be. Yeah, Jim's she been taking fashion them, tips she, from her. <laughs> <laughs> Jim would Jim would rock that that glittered tiger fit she yeah. had going yesterday. I love the feather jacket yeah, today, Jim. That's really there, nice. There wasn't there like a pink feathery. I think yeah, that would look dazzled. great on me. Absolutely, we got to make that happen. You could definitely pull off the flamingo look. Yes, you could. <laughs> um, I, but she's listen. She's unapologetically herself, much mm -hmm. like her team. And um, it's cool to think she became the first women's coach to bring a pair of tie or you know a pair of titles to, to two different schools um right. and it's lsu's mm. first obviously um so so yeah i uh i i just want to celebrate that for just the state of louisiana yes. these, are, these are great these are celebratory times right now and we're hoping that carries over into new orleans absolutely i was the first basket the first basketball game uh, men or women's that i think my wife has been like hey turn on the game 
and uh, she watched the end of that game. Uh, it was awesome to see. Uh, yeah, just just a great time to be in Louisiana right now. I feel like it is time to celebrate, Jimothy. What do you think? I definitely agree with that. You know, Aaron, you know, speaking of teams that have been winning almost all of their games, I guess LSU won yeah. all of their NCAA games, but what do you think has been some of the keys of the, the turnaround that the Pelicans have had? They've won seven of their last eight games. It feels in some ways that this is the best that they've played all season. Well, whatever is in, uh, whatever Brandon Ingram has been, you know, eating, he needs to continue to, because he is playing out of his mind right now. That has certainly helped. Yes. Um, and I'll, t- I'll tell you, I mean, here's the thing. I had this conversation yesterday with someone. Scoreboard watching this time of year is obviously so much fun. I mean, we all love it, right? Mm-hmm. It's fun. It means you're, you're, you know, it means you have something to play for, but it can become convoluted and for me sometimes confusing it's like that meme of like you know algorithm and numbers like swarming my head and i'm in like this stupor just holding your temple yeah what Um, (laughs) at the end of the day you can go over almost every scenario of so and so beat so and so and then so and so beat so and so then we could jump so and so that's great though but it doesn't matter if you don't handle the game in front of you yeah you have to control – Willie Willie says it all the time. Control what you can control. Handle your business. Grab that destiny by the horns, Joe, and do not release its grasp. So that yes. is the, that's the mindset right now. That preaching aside, I will tell you, the game this week I'll be keeping an eye on is the Wednesday night game, Lakers-Clippers. And I mm-hmm. loved Tim Bontemps' tweet earlier this week from ESPN on it because – if Pell's Warriors, it has implications on it in terms of if Pell's Warriors, Clippers, and Lakers all somehow finish tied by regular season's end, how they will be arranged will come down to that Wednesday result yeah. between the Clippers and the Lakers. So if the Clippers win, Pell's will move to fifth in the West, fifth, five. That's crazy. Yeah. If Lakers win, Pell's will be sixth. So either way, we win out. We'll be looking at a, you know, completely avoiding hopefully that playing tournament, which would be nice for yeah. rest and and rehab and preparation for the playoffs. We could also be looking at a rematch with the Suns, which you know, I mean, that could be juicy. We could be mm-hmm. looking at seeing the Kings in the first round, who we meet tomorrow. I mean, this is, I mean, again, the, the you know what meme I'm talking about? It's like yes. we're like mm-hmm. the numbers, or like it's like the, <laughs> the Napoleon Dynamite, where it's just like I'm in a stupor and I'm like trying to figure it out. So I go to Jim Eichenhofer's Twitter. To help me. Same. same. I, I have to go to Jim because I am not that smart. Jim is an oracle for a reason. Uh, Jim, you've got the Jim Narios. I mean, look, I don't often I really check do. Twitter, but yeah. uh, recently I've had to because every day it seems like there's there's breaking news. So now I wake up, I put the phone on full blast of uh, brightness, and I just blast my rods and cones <laughs> with information. Yeah, you know, so, sometimes I feel like I'm going a little overboard with some of the tweets, but then at the same time I'm like, you know what, this is the, this is the chance to kind of – as you mentioned, Aaron, it's kind of it's so much fun to be able to follow the scoreboard, and it's relevant to your team. I mean, there's been too many years where that they weren't in the race at this point, and you're just kind of counting down the the games. So I feel like I'm trying to seize the moment as far as just okay. breaking down all of the different stuff. But you know what you said, Aaron, about how you can kind of go crazy going through all the scenarios. The the players, and I think Willie Green, I'm sure the coaches have been asked about this a lot lately as far as like how much attention do you pay to the other games. I like the fact that it seems like a lot of them have said, even if they're kind of fibbing a little bit, they've said, you know, we're not, we're not focused on it. We're not paying attention to it. <laughs> I think that's for us. It's for us to pay attention to the scores yeah. and worry about other games and other teams. But I'm glad that those guys have tried to lock in as much as they can because that's probably – the best usage of their energy to devote to just like you said, Aaron, take care of what you can control, win the games that you can win. And they've won seven out of their last eight. So that's the whole reason that we're even sitting here having this conversation is they've had st- the stretch that they've had where they've been, you know, just racking up wins lately. Absolutely. So you are absolutely right. My friend, we have, you have every right to celebrate considering we have had far too many seasons in which we aren't scoreboard watching because we really don't have anything to play. I mean, if anything, we're counting down like the ping pong balls. So Mm -hmm. this is, I am much happier being in this position right now. Yeah. Not vacation planning. We're actually looking at where we can rise to. And also Jim, if we get to that five, six seed, I don't have to grow Alfred Payton hair. And I don't think I'm starting to think I can't do it. (laughs) My hair is just like, it's as tall as it'll get. And really I just look like Kramer right now. Yeah. That's a great look. I'm wondering how many kids listening to this podcast understand that reference because we're kind of at that point in our lives. 
but yeah. I dig it. And you I am totally old. pull off the cream. I like I like it. Yeah, it actually, it's it's more of the real me, I think. Uh, but Jim, you know, I mean, you, you have been breaking down all the ways on Twitter. I've been checking your Twitter to Aaron's point to see where we stand. And it just seems like it's so fluid, even mm-hmm. when we're not playing. Right. But I think it has, the one way that it's cleared up a little bit is that it does seem like now, hopefully, fingers crossed, they're, they're in good position that they won't drop down beyond like eighth. It yes. seems like eighth, as long as... Things don't go totally good? against, you know, what we're looking at this week coming up. Um, so that that's been great. And I mean, another thing that's cleared up too that we were a little dicey about for a long time was: Are they going to make the play-in tournament? Mm-hmm. And now they only need to win one more game, and they're definitely in. That's so. the magic number, right? One, just one. Here, so, and here's another question I actually have for both of you. And and I, you know, we we've, we've kind of debated it on Pelicans Live as well. You know, considering who sits ahead of us right now, you know, we're looking to clinch the series over Sacramento, mm-hmm. who has already clinched a spot in the playoffs. Um, Memphis has as well. Right. What are the odds that those teams rest a few of their star players or top, play, you know, key mm-hmm. players, you know, knowing, you know, and, and that that could ultimately help us, you know, yeah, um, yeah. obviously you want to, you want to, you want to beat the best to be the best, but I mean, listen, like I'll, I'll, I'll take whatever luck or, yes, or any sort so, of, you yes. know, we'll take egg that we can get this time of year. Um, but, but that's kind of something else I'm, I'm kind of yeah. keeping an eye on. Like I saw, I saw Malik Monk was listed as doubtful and he is, he's been stellar as a yeah. reserve for Sacramento this year. I mean, you have Mike Brown. I, we're, we're actually going to dive into on, on uh, Tuesday's Pelicans live. We're going to, uh, debate coach of the year candidates Ooh. and Mike Brown most definitely has a case this year. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, so it, so that's something I don't know. Like yeah. what do you guys, no, like, I, how do you guys kind of feel about that yeah. scenario? No, to your point about we'll take whatever we can get. I mean, if Portland wants to play, Five guys that no one's ever heard of sure. against the Pelicans. We'll gladly take some that. guy named <laughs> Doug scored forty. And then, and then if those same five guys want to beat Minnesota yesterday, we'll take that as well. Yeah. That's a, that's another conversation. But no, I think um, I think there's a decent chance that we might see some rest from Sacramento and or Fien- or Memphis. But um, the Memphis is two games ahead of Sacramento. They both have four left, and if they tie, Sacramento gets the two seed. I guess one of the other questions that could be asked and I can't answer is how motivated is Sacramento to move up to number two. I I don't really know. I don't know necessarily if that's a big consideration for them compared to just going into the playoffs in good shape and healthy. And But even beyond so, those two, I mean, you're facing the, the Knicks with no Julius Randle. You're going right. to be facing the Timberwolves with no Nas Reed. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, when, when I looked at that schedule and I saw back-to-back Kings and Grizzlies, ugh. But yeah, I mean, to Aaron's point, with their playoff spots sort of locked in, and and with everyone so nervous about, you know, who might get injured, yeah. I really do feel like there's a pretty good chance that we yeah. could win a. I I don't want to you know say like oh we're, we're taking them all. I feel good about this stretch. Yeah, though. sometimes too it comes down to more what the motivation is, even for the guys that are playing. Sometimes that's even more of a important thing to think about than whether they actually rest guys. Just seems like that New Orleans clearly will have much, much more at stake when they yes. play these two games than the Kings and the Grizzlies will. So, I mean, I, I think you have to probably yeah. factor that into what we're going to expect in these two games. And, and David and I talked about, you know, I think, I can't remember, I, I want to say it was maybe a couple years ago, and I can't remember, it, it was like, it was like Dallas, Denver, and Clippers. It was like those three were kind of, they were like, they were almost, they were sitting at the top of the standings, but they were playing for matchups. So mm-hmm. I remember there were some nights where yeah. it's like, Oh, we're gonna rest a couple guys because we'd rather see this team in the yep. first round versus this one. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're playing with fire at that oh, point. For sure. yeah. I mean, like, I mean, for that sure. that just seems like that's something that may come back to bite you. So yeah. So to your point, yeah. I mean, Memphis. I mean, excuse me, Sacramento may may want to jump a spot. So so again, that's something I'm keeping an eye on. I think I think the voice in the locker room that is has certainly made a difference in this stretch is um, CJ McCollum. To think he is in his tenth season and he has never missed a playoff like that's incredible yeah, yeah. like when you really wrap your yeah. mind around that it does he does not know what it feels like to to, to take a vacation in april because he's always Must playing be nice. um does, he, right right but does, but i think that that veteran voice that experience that knowing what it takes this time of year he's in these guys ears and he's kind of you know he's one-on-one and he's you know kind of coaching them up on on between the ear stuff at this right. point, because that's really what it comes down to um, in, in these sort of, you know, heated games and, 
And I mean, there's, you know, they're, they're pressure situations and, and CJ knows how to handle that pressure and he's helping the younger guys learn how to handle it as well. So I think, I think he's critical. Um, pretty cool to think BI um, joined Giannis, Luka, Jokic, and Lillard. I mean, think about yeah, that company. Fine company. As the only players this season to post multiple 30 point triple doubles. And I loved the fact that like when he, when, when he got his first career triple double, like, no one on the team knew it was his first. So like they didn't really <laughs> celebrate it because they were, they assumed he'd already had at least. I think one. we all did. I yeah. thought that was it hysterical. was surprising. Mm-hmm. It was a surprising stat uh, for him to actually get that. And another guy that mm-hmm. actually has been looking better in this stretch, uh, quietly. It's not going to show up in the box score. And I think it's especially because of how bad he made, he was looking before. Dyson Daniels, uh, ever since his birthday, I mean, that game on his birthday was brutal. And it just seemed like he had mm-hmm. lost his confidence for a bit. And it, it won't reflect in the box score, but he has been looking better. Just his confidence looks back. He's It's been nice to see Dyson, you know, as much as he's been struggling, finally looking like he's getting back to form. Dyson, Jay Rich, Herb, Najee, those guys are helping this team recommit to what it does well. Yeah. And that's their recommitment to def- the, the defensive side of the ball because – that side propels everything else that they do well. And David talked about that on, on the last call of live. Those guys are swiping, you know, they're crashing yes. boards, they're scoring in transition. They're doing all the little things, not always seen in a box score, all the little blue collar things that maybe no one really wants to do the energy plays and, and whatnot. Like they are willing to, to provide that. And it, it, David says, you know, they're, they're kind of becoming this defensive unit that, no one wants to see like no one wants to see the Pels right now. No one yeah. wants to see their defense right now. And I'm looking at those guys as kind of those those four that have really spearheaded that particular effort. Yeah. Um, because when this team is scoring in transition, that is when they are going well. And so, and and again, and you know, we had discussed it after the the Lakers loss. What 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 happened? <laughs> what happened there was. They got completely away from what they did well. Yeah. They, they 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 played right into the Lakers' hand. They played they played Lakers ball. Yeah. Now they're recommitting back to Pelicans basketball and what they do well. And again, they are focused solely on that unit in that locker room and what they do well. And they are looking to control what they can control. And I love that mindset. You talked about how you know they're becoming a team that people don't want to face. I, I mean, obviously, it seems like Bi is at the top of the list right now for. Thing, things that other teams are trying to take away or things a guy that people are worried about when they go into games. What did you think of – I'm not sure if you saw this, that Willie Green after the game, the last game said uh, to, to Brandon in the locker room, he said, you're playing like the best player in the league right now. And then our guy Josh Hart mm-hmm. also tweeted something like, is any is anyone going to start talking about <laughs> how B.I. is the torching the NBA? Shout out to Josh Hart. Love that man. I know, Josh. We miss him. And um, and I love, I love first and foremost that he's still so, showing so much support yes. um, for, for New Orleans. And, but, but he's right. I mean, it's like, when are we now? I, I hate saying this, but I think um, Brandon's, you know, injury status may have hurt some of that conversation sure. surrounding no like doubt. kind of where he sits no among the stars yeah. in the league. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, I think that that might've played a part. I think if he can prove to just remain healthy for long stretches and continue to produce like this. Right. Yeah. Like he's a superstar. Like he could be a superstar in this league. Again, like you look at some of the company he's joining on a nightly basis with various stats and numbers that he's putting up and records he's setting. And, and it's remarkable. And I think what I love most is that, He's not, he's not flashy. Like he's, you know, he doesn't talk. He, you know, he really doesn't go out and, you know, he's not flashy. He just, he just wants to hoop. Like he just wants to play ball. He skipped his senior prom to go to the gym and get shots (laughs) up. Like that's not like, you know what I mean? Like that's who Brandon Ingram is. He just wants (laughs) to play ball, man. And I totally dig that. And Herb reminds me a lot of that as well. Herb is very much like that. And I think that's why. They are, they are two of my, my husband, I will tell you, like, those are like his two favorite Pelicans because they are just blue collared, head down, 
go to work, and you need those guys, especially this time of year. And look, the Pelicans have won seven of their last eight. We are getting right at the right time, and I'm just glad that we get to ride the crest of the wave into this playoffs. It's been too long. It's been too many brutal seasons where we're just counting down, and I'm glad that we get to go into this, as you said, final four with our heads held high. Aaron Hardigan, thanks for joining these two old dogs on the Pelicans podcast. And uh, we just look forward to more good times down the stretch. Let's keep going, huh? Listen, final lap. Let's go. We're going Mario Kart this week. Yes. It is Mario Kart time. Final lap. Let's go. <laughs> and it is going to be must-watch TV. I, uh, I always love jumping on with you guys. And um, can't wait to hopefully celebrate a playoff position with you very soon. Absolutely. I can hear the music getting faster in my head already, and Jim's got his turtle shells ready to go. (laughs) So uh, let's do this final lap. Aaron, thanks so much. We look forward to seeing you on these Bally's broadcasts. Thanks, guys. Always good times with Aaron Hardigan of Bally's Sports. Jim, I am just addicted to good times, man. It it just seems like they keep on coming. Uh, We got four games left, and you know what? These are four tough teams when you look at them. But, man, I feel good for a myriad of reasons, but you're facing the Kings and Grizzlies on a back-to-back. Knicks, T-Wolves. Break it down. Give us hope, man. Yeah, you know, I think one of the biggest reasons to be hopeful as we've talked about throughout the season is just, I mean, the Pelicans are 25 and 13 at home. Um, they're actually undefeated against these three teams in the Smoothie King center this Ooh. season. They beat, they beat Memphis pretty early in the year here at home. They beat Sacramento by a pretty big margin at home, even though Brandon Ingram didn't play in that game. Um, De'Aaron Fox didn't play in that game either for Sacramento, right. but um, that's what I'm going to look at a lot is just, the Pelicans continuing to to do what they've done all season, which has been be a very good team at home other than the one stretch in January where they lost a few games. But mm-hmm. besides that, I mean, they've been, they've been tough. So I think right now, really the, if you look at it from a broad standpoint, I mean, if, if New Orleans can win, if they can win all four games, they're guaranteed top six. Yeah, just take care now, of business. TCB, baby. That, that might be tough to, to ask for with the teams that they're playing yeah. just to win all four games. But I do think, and someone asked me this question on Twitter yesterday, which I thought was a good question. What if, what if the Pelicans win three out of four, say, which is a reasonable ask, I think, yeah. especially with having these three home games. And I think, I mean, it's impossible to know this for sure, but I do think that even winning three of four will get them in the top six. And if you consider where they've come from, where not that long ago they were in 12th place, not that long ago they had a 10-game losing streak, not that long ago they were three, four games under 500. For if they're able to finish in the top six and get say you know say the six seed, mm-hmm. I think that would be just a great accomplishment based on you know everything that the team has been through this year, all of the injuries that they've had to deal with. So I mean I I would I think I'd be pretty ecstatic if they were able to to finish in the top six and yeah. have all of next week off, not have to go through the play in tournament. Yes. Um. But even even if they don't, even if they aren't able to do that, I still think. A lot of people would probably agree with me that even if they finish seven and you get two chances to win a home a home game, I mean that's not bad either. It, yeah. Again, based on where things sat not that long ago. Not that long ago. I mean, not that long ago, BI seemed like something was still wrong with him. Remember, it just took him a while to get mm-hmm. right. We we've forgotten about how how rusty he maybe looked when he first right. came back. But man, I I just cannot remember a time since maybe early in the season, since last year, twenty twenty two, when. Uh, people were just this excited about the Pelicans. I saw some lady in the grocery store just spilling almond milk and shrimp everywhere, talking about how excited she was about the Pelicans. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, it's just it just feels like the vibes in the air are mm-hmm. good. And and to your point, if the Pelicans just take care of their own business, just assert themselves and play well, you don't want to worry about any of these teams and their circumstances. But as we talked about with Aaron, uh, you know, the the Kings and the Grizzlies may have their playoff seating sort of locked up, and it may not be that important to them. They may rest people. Now, uh, because of the scenarios, the scenarios that you talked about uh, before, where some of these teams, uh, the losses that they experienced, you know, the OKC to the Pacers and, you know, T-Wolves fall. It's just, it, it just seems like you, you can't take anything for granted. Right. You just no, have true. to beat these teams and assert, you know, assert yourselves. But there's extra reason to be a little hopeful. I don't know if you're going to get the full punch 
from the Kings or the Grizzlies. Yeah, you know, you mentioned the word vibes. I do think that Saturday's game was a good example of that intensity that we saw earlier in the season in the Smoothie King Center has returned. It's It might not be quite at that 100% level that it it's was good, during man. the Phoenix series or during the playoffs last year. When I say Phoenix series, I mean the, the two games that they played them in December. Yep. Um, it might not be there yet, but I think it's climbing to that point. And so I do think that on Tuesday and Wednesday, maybe in particular Wednesday, because this this city and our fan base, I think, has a little something extra for the Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not exactly the most popular team in the NBA at this point. Nope. Um, so it's been good to see because it seemed like for a while there was a dip, and understandably so, yeah. in the volume in the arena in the intensity because the team was struggling. And, I mean, a lot of times people will say, like, how, hey, how come they're not being louder? How come they're not – cheering more how come they're not more into the game but you have to give them a reason to do that yeah we're happy as heck that they're there in the first place now it's on the pelicans and the team to play well to to boost the energy and yeah. give ignite the crowd and uh they were able to do that saturday so that's really what i'm looking for in the rest of this homestand is i mean i don't expect i don't think it's reasonable to say like yeah it needs to be playoff caliber crowd but it's i think it's if you can get to 95 percent of what you see in the playoffs yeah we would gladly take that i mean that this is the time to start winding up people to start girding your loins because man what what more can you ask for bi is red hot trey murphy's emergence that you're mm-hmm. watching right before your eyes and you know what cj mccollum showing that steady veteran leadership it seems like jim you may have the last laugh, according <laughs> to you. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. I, I feel like for the second year in a row, it's funny how if you think about it, after the tr- right after the trade last year in February in 2022, the Pelicans lost a few games when he came in. They kind of had to sort out the chemistry on the court, figure out how people fit. Uh, CJ didn't necessarily have like a great individual start to coming here, which, I mean, somewhat understandable. He had to totally yeah, uproot just his to life, offense, come from and, yeah. Portland all the way from Portland to here. But then what happens in March, B.I. comes back from an injury. He has a great stretch. They play incredibly well. C.J. makes his ninth playoff appearance after coming through with an incredible game against the Spurs in the first play-in game, and then the second play-in game, the Pelicans are able to come back in the fourth quarter. Just kind of battled through a lot of different stuff, getting the playoffs. This year, Brandon Ingram comes back from an injury. Now he's playing at an incredibly high level. Yep. Um, the team is playing its best basketball, I think, for the second year in a row in the springtime. I don't know if it's the temperatures warming up, if the daylight savings Whatever. is kicking in, the, the sun is out a little bit later. I think it's because I haven't changed my lucky socks. Uh, it's it's, it's that, yeah, alienating what, my that's friends and family, but you know, I, yeah. th- I think it's helping. Uh, you know, it, it also shout out to B.I.'s defense, by the way. Uh, when they put him on Westbrook, he limited Westbrook to five points from that point on. And let's be honest, mm. he was cooking us a little bit, Westbrook. Uh, right. He didn't look that washed. Uh, early in that game, but man, how locked in he seems right now. It is playoff mode for B.I. You can see it in his eyes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, his teammates are recognizing that. Uh, you know, we, we got to hope that we see Zion, but whether or not we do, seeing B.I. carry this team and watching him come into his own as a leader, uh, it just really seems like this season is different. You've seen moments of that from B.I., but it really seems like he's putting the team on his shoulders right yeah, now. Yeah, and I think I definitely agree with what Aaron said as far as, you know, some of the accolades and compliments of his game have been pushed to the side because of um, him missing a big chunk of time this year. But it, it could be another thing where, you know, again, people focus a ton on the playoffs, and understandably so. It feels right. like the eyes of the world and the basketball world are on you when you get to the playoffs. And that's one of the reasons why during the Phoenix playoff series last season, a lot of people were like, man, this – this guy Ingram is really good. I don't, didn't realize he was this good. So hopefully that'll happen again. And hopefully this will be the 10th straight playoff appearance for Mr. McCollum. Yep. And hopefully the Pelicans will able, will be able to maybe not just get in the playoffs and get, but you know, they had a great series against Phoenix didn't win, but maybe we can go a little deeper this year. I, it, I feel like the way they're playing right now, I think everything same. is on the table. Absolutely. And I, I feel like I'm not going to have to grow my Alfred Payton hair. Hey, Clippers play the Lakers on Wednesday. I'm torn about that one. I just don't know. You know what? I, feel. I don't think you should be torn. I think you should be rooting for the Clippers, 
partly because of the fact that the Pelicans went 3-0 and against the Clippers. They only went 1-3 and against the Lakers. You know, I, I had talked a lot recently about how we want Utah totally out of the picture because the Pelicans went 0-3 against them. That's almost done. That's almost a check on the list yep. of something that's been accomplished. I think now if the Pelicans can get the Lakers out of the picture, if they can get a game or two ahead of them and we don't have to worry about the Lakers dragging the Pelicans down because of a – the one and three record that New Orleans had against them. That would be oh. huge. Um, I mean, honestly, like, I don't think this is going to, this takes like an advanced math degree. There's a really good chance that there's gonna, the Pelicans are going to be tied with multiple teams. So it's as much as we look at tiebreakers with just one individual team, it's possible that there will be multi, it'll be a, just a traffic jam. Yep. So root for the Clippers, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Easy. Done. Yeah. There you uh, go. Man, a, a huge stretch of games. This is going to be a lot of fun this week. I mean, with, Sacramento, third seeded team in the West right now coming in. That should be a really good, fun game. You got Memphis. No matter what the circumstances are, I feel feel like people are ready for that game. Yeah. And then Friday against the Knicks, another team that is you know above five hundred and about. And they actually did clinch a playoff spot. Um, we'll see Mr. Josh Hart in the arena on Friday. I'm sure he'll get a big ovation, and then we'll get to business as far as the fan base rooting against the Knicks in every possible way. But this is so much fun right now, and I feel like it's been such an up-and-down, crazy, exhausting season from yes. a mental standpoint in a lot of ways. But, man, it's nice to see it turn in the direction that it has. Lately. Yes, absolutely. Uh, man, I am looking forward to it, Jim. Thanks for guiding me through these uh, challenging times. As Boy, I missed a lot, huh? <laughs> and uh, we will talk to y'all once again on Wednesday for... A jam-packed Western Conference Wednesday, my friend. Hey, by the way, uh, when we did the pick'em, I uh, forgot to say, Jonas had a good uh, good game, uh, and that means me and you were tied for the pick'em. We gotta have a time. Oh, yeah, that's well, gonna happen on Friday. Drama. So Friday will be the uh, deciding. Uh, it will it won't be a Saturday, sc- hashtag Saturday score. Yep. It's gonna be a Friday game, but yeah, that's it's all. it all comes down to this. It's it. I feel like some people are going to be more highly anticipating this than anything else that's going to happen Absolutely. the rest of the season. I know people got it circled on their calendars. What's the pick <laughs> result going to be? But look, it just shows that me and Jim are correct all the time, that we smoked everyone else. Right. Uh, but look, it's going to be high drama, so get ready. But we will talk to you once again on Wednesday. And until then... Come on! Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Pelicans podcast presented by SeatGeek. Join us three times per week on pelicans.com, the Pelicans mobile app, or you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Pelicans podcast presented by SeatGeek. Dagger, dagger, dagger.